Hi everybody, in this lesson we're going to continue our study of statistics by looking at types of statistical studies that statisticians use um, to collect data. Because we need to collect the data. Statistics is all about collecting data and interpreting data and making inferences with this data is our, our, our goal in the end. But we need some, some way to study this data and collect it. So that's what we're going to look at in this lesson. So there's three major types of statistical studies that we can do. Um, the first one is an observational study. Um, and the key word there is observational. You're just observing your participants. You're just observing something to make to collect your data. So let's read through this and talk about why it's an observational study. So a study investigated whether boys are quicker at learning video games than girls. 20 randomly selected, and that's a key thing there, randomly selected boys and 20 randomly selected girls played a video game that they'd never played before. The time it took them to reach a certain level of expertise was recorded. So notice, there's no outside influence here. There's no outside influence or questions being asked. The statistician here is simply just collecting data. The statistician has no role in, in interfering or, or asking these kids anything. They're just, they're just sitting there observing it. So when I think of observational studies, I think of some creepy old guy who just sits in the park and watches people walk by. You're just sitting there, you're just observing the data or you're just collecting or, or getting the data from somewhere. You're not actually doing anything or asking anything. Now notice there was random selection. We need our sample. This sample here needs to be randomly selected. We need to be randomly selected when we do these surveys to become representative. I, for my for my um for my sample to be good, random selection needs to be used so that it represents the population. I need a representative sample of the population. So by randomly picking people, there's a good chance that I'm that I can say that I, my results are valid. I'm not. The statistician isn't fixing the results of the study by picking 20 boys that are really good at video games. They're just randomly selecting people. So that's all I have for observational studies. There's no outside influence. Someone's just sitting there looking and analyzing data. You're not actually applying a treatment to someone. You're not asking questions. Um, you cannot have cause and effect. You get no cause and effect from observational studies. <clears throat> No cause and effect. I cannot say the gender caused them to be better, to be better at uh, their being a male or being a female caused them to be better video game players. I'm just saying there's a relationship. It just finds relationships. We can observe and find relationships between our variables. Between variables. A survey is similar to an observational study, but you, there has to be some form of question asking. So a study is conducted to determine the number of students who do not like social studies throughout the school. As students enter the building, every 10 student was asked if they had a favorable view or unfavorable view of social studies. So the students' responses were recorded. So notice, they're asking. A survey involves asking questions. You ask the participants questions. You physically have to question them instead of just collecting the data by watching them. You're actually interfering with your participants and asking them questions. Notice this is a great sampling technique. I'm asking every 10 student that entered the building. This is giving me a representative sample. So I'm randomly selecting. I have random selection happening here. I have random selection to produce to produce a representative sample, a representative sample. Um, surveys do not give us cause and effect. I do not get cause and effect from this. I can just analyze my results and say there's associations or relationships, but I can't actually say this caused them to not like social studies. Um, so notice I'm actively interfering with the participants. I'm asking part, I'm asking the questions to the participants, to the participants. So you actually have to question them, whereas observational studies, there's no questioning occurring. 
So those guys kind of go together. And then on a different strand, I can do an experiment. And experiments are actually very important, but very hard to accurately do. So let's look at this experiment here and pick out some of the key pieces. So a study determines whether taking aspirin regularly helps to prevent heart attacks. A large group of male physicians of comparable health were randomly assigned. So notice I'm not randomly selecting. Random selection would be great, but I'm using random assignment. I'm using random assignment in my experiment. What am I assigning them to? I'm assigning them to one of two groups. You're either getting the treatment. That's the key thing with experiments is I'm applying a treatment. You apply treatments, experiments, you apply treatments to your participants. You get the aspirin, you don't get the aspirin. This plant grows in sunlight, this plant does not grow in sunlight. So I apply treatments to my subjects, my participants. So this group, I'm randomly assigning you, you get the treatment, or you get randomly assigned to take a placebo. So a placebo is a control group. So there's a treatment group, I have a treatment, and I have a control. That gives me something to compare it with. So um, they've actually found out over the years that um, the thought of taking medicine actually makes people feel better. So um, what they do is that they give half the other people a placebo, which is like a sugar pill. So that way they're at least going through the process and still think that they're taking medicine, even though they're actually not. So I randomly assign my participants to the treatment group or to the control group, and then I compare my results. So that's how experiments work. And if you have a well-designed experiment, you can make a causal conclusion. You get cause and effect. I can say this caused that to happen. By taking aspirin, heart attacks were lowered. The, the chance of having a heart attack was lowered. So that's the nice part of experiments is you can make a conclusion like that. Because I have this randomly, in, randomly designed controlled experiment, uh, random assignment in my controlled experiment, I can say the treatment caused this outcome. I can say the treatment actually caused this effect to occur versus the placebo versus my control group, the control group that didn't have anything occur to them. So those are our three major types of studies. Um, I do want to go back to surveys for a second because it is the year 2020 right now. Um, a census is where you ask everyone, where you survey everyone. You survey the entire population. You survey the entire population, which is what the United States is doing right now as we speak. They're trying to figure out and get an accurate population count. So, so by law in 2020, the United States and all citizens, um, everyone living in the United States has to actually complete the census. Um, so the United States has an accurate representation of the, of, of, the, um, of the country. And that happens every 10 years constitutionally. So a census is a special type of survey where you don't use random selection. You survey everybody. You survey the entire population. Um, censuses are hard to do. They're very expensive, and it's very hard to ask everybody. That's not a good sampling technique. It's not a good way to collect data. Um, but a census, you ask everybody, which is, which is extremely hard to do, especially when you're in the United States and have to get over 330 million people. So we have observational studies. We have the creepy guy sitting in the park. We have surveys where you're asking people questions and you have experiments where you're assigning people treatments. So let's go through and for each of these, um, decide if it's a survey, an observational study or an experiment, and we'll give a reason why. Um, and then we'll talk about populations or treatments and stuff, maybe. Um, so the local department of transportation is responsible for maintaining lane and edge lanes on the paved roads. There are two new paint products on the market. 20 comparable stretches of road are identified. Paint A is randomly assigned to 10 of the stretches of road, and the other 10 get paint B. The department finds that paint B lasts longer. So, notice they're applying a treatment. A treatment is being applied here. The type of paint is your treatment here. The type of paint is the treatment. And what am I measuring? We're measuring, we're measuring how long it lasts, right? B lasts longer. We're measuring how long the paint lasts. So because I use that word treatment, this happens to be an experiment. I'm doing an experiment between these two paints, and I randomly assign the roads to get certain types of paint. So that's an experiment happening right there. 
The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration conducts annual studies on driver seatbelt usage at random selections of the roadway in states of the United States. To determine if seatbelt usage has increased, data are analyzed over two successive years. So it doesn't seem like they're questioning people. It seems like they're just sitting there and looking at if people use the seatbelt. It doesn't, doesn't say that they're questioning people about their seatbelt usage, which would be a problem itself because if you ask someone, do you wear a seatbelt, chances are that person is going to say yes. So um, th this is an observational study. This is an observational study because we're just sitting there and seeing if they're wearing their seatbelt. Um, what is the population of interest? The population we're looking at is all drivers in the U.S. All drivers, um, all drivers in the U.S. So that's my population of interest. I'm looking at everyone who drives, and what am I studying? I'm studying: Are they wearing a seatbelt? Um, sh people should brush their teeth at least twice a day for at least two to three minutes with each brushing. Thank you. That's, that's my health advice for you guys. Brush your teeth. For a statistics class project, you ask, there's a keyword there, we're asking a random number of students at your school questions concerning their toothbrushing activities. So this is clearly a survey. Why is it a survey? Because I am actively asking people, how long are you brushing your teeth? Do you brush your teeth? So there's asking. The, 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 st the, the statistician is actively asking the participants questions. So that's why it's a survey here. Um, the population is we're looking at the people at our school, the students in my school. And what am I interested in? I'm interested in their toothbrushing activities. So then the students at my school is my population. And this is what I'm interested in studying. Oh boy, we got a lot of words here. Linda wanted to know if it's easier for students to memorize a list of common three-letter words, such as fly pen in red, than a list of three-letter nonsense words, such as veer, zop, whatever word that is. She randomly selects 28 students from all 10th graders in her district. She put 14 blue chips and 14 red chips in a jar without looking. Each student chose a, trip, a chip. Those with red chips got the common words, and those with blue chips got the nonsense words. She gave the students one minute to memorize their list. After the minute, she collected the list and asked the students to write down all the words they could remember. She recorded the number of correct words. So there's a lot of stuff happening here. So the key thing here is this, this step right here. So the red chip people got the common words and the blue chip people got the nonsense words. To me, that looks like random assignment. She is randomly assigning them She's randomly assigned, she's randomly assigning them a treatment, random assignment of a treatment. What are the two treatments here? Do you get nonsense? Are you going in the nonsense category? Or are you going in the normal words, the common words? So she's doing an experiment in this case. She's doing an experiment to see if the common words are easier to remember. They're easier to remember. So there's a random assignment of the treatments. So you get nonsense, you get normal words. So this is an experiment um, because of that, that random assignment that occurred in that step. All right, hopefully that wasn't too bad. We got a couple more and we'll call it a lesson. So consider the following scenarios. So we got three scenarios here. Researchers wanted to determine if there's a relationship between whether or not women smoke during pregnancy and the birth weight of her baby. Researchers examined records of the past five years in a large hospital. A large high school wants to know the proportion of students who are currently using illegal drugs. Uniformed police officers ask a random sample of 200 students about their drug use. And a company develops a new dog food. The company wants to know if dogs would prefer the new food over the competition's food. So 100 dogs who were food deprived overnight were given equal amounts of the two food, the new food versus the competitor's food. The proportion of dogs preferring the new food versus the competitor's food was recorded. So which of these is an experiment? Which of these am I applying a treatment? Which of these are treatments being applied? Um, so am I applying treatments to making the woman smoke? Uh, no. There's no treatments being applied by the police officer here, so it's got to be the dogs. It's got to be the dogs. And the treatment, what I'm, what I'm treating there is what type of food they get, is the type of food. Those are my treatments that I'm observe, observing there. Which scenario describes a survey? Will the results be accurate? So th this one here is an experiment. We're done with that one. So which one involves asking, is, is actually asking people things? Well, there's the keyword right there. 
ask. So number two, uh, the illegal drugs, the drug use example. Is it going to be accurate? Well, let's talk about this, folks. Um, if, if a police officer came into our classroom, but he's not going to because we're not in class. Um, if he came into our classroom and he asked you, do you use illegal drugs? Um, I would hope your answer, well, your answer should be no. Don't use illegal drugs. Don't use drugs. Drugs are bad. Um, but if the police officer came in and asked you, I don't think people are going to be honest telling the police officer, yes, I use illegal drugs. Um, so are the results going to be accurate? No way. It's going to be underestimated. The true result, the true, uh, the, the, the estimate we get is going to be an underestimate. The estimate we get will be too low. People are going to lie to the police officer and say, no, police officer, I do not use illegal drugs, when in the actual case they do. So um, when you use a survey, there's a lot of things you need to control for, and you need to take into account that people might lie to you. Um, so if you ask people, do you use drugs, there needs to be some kind of anonymous feature so that people feel comfortable asking the, answering the questions to the survey. The same thing with when you brush your teeth. If you ask people, do you brush your teeth, chances are they're going to say yes in their pro They could be lying to your face. Um, so that's why you need some kind of anonymity when you do surveys so that you actually get, so that the sample statistics that you get are actually accurate. Uh, the remaining scenario is an observational study. So the baby one is an observational study. Why? They're not asking questions. They're not doing any kind of treatments here. They're just examining the records. Let me see the data and they're going to look at it. Is it, is it possible to perform an experiment to see if a causal relation exists? Exist? So remember, we want to know a cause and effect relationship. Does this cause that to happen? But it's an observational study. So we do not get causal relationships. We only get that if we do a randomized controlled experiment. So why can't I do an experiment? All right, I'm going to take 100 pregnant women and say, all right, you 50 smoke, you 50 don't smoke. That is completely unethical. That is completely unethical to make women who are pregnant do harmful things to their body when, when, when they're pregnant and could, and could affect their child when we know that it has an effect on the child. Um, we cannot say that smoking caused these babies to have a lower weight or some, uh, have a lower weight, but we can say there's a pretty strong association or relationship between the two. So um, it's unethical. Is it possible to perform an experiment? No, it's completely unethical. Um, statisticians need to have some kind of ethics, um, some kind of moral compass. Um, it's unethical to make pregnant women smoke. And you can't randomly assign them. All right, you you 50, you got randomly assigned, go smoke cigarettes. No, that, that's, that's even worse. Um, I mean, you can look at women who do smoke, but chances are there's other factors, there's other variables. Um, that, that maybe women who smoke are more likely to, um, who, they're, they're, they're may, may be more likely to have other health issues. So maybe that's why the baby's weight is lower. So it's really unethical to do experiments. Uh, when you work with humans, you have to be very careful when you're doing experiments. And there's whole review boards um, that, that have to approve experiments. All right, last one here. A researcher wants to find out whether higher levels of a certain drug given to rats would decrease the time it takes them to complete the maze to find food. Why do we have to do an experiment rather than an observational study? Well, we're going to apply treatments. We're going to apply treatments, and I want cause and effect. I want cause. I want to say the drug. I want to say the drug. I want to say the drug caused the time to decrease. The only way you can get causation is by doing experiments. So describe an experiment the researcher might carry out on 30 comparable rats in three dosage levels. So I'm going to take my 30 comparable rats, I'm going to take my 30 rats and randomly assign them. I'm going to randomly assign 10 of them to three groups. You guys take the zero millimeter milligrams of drugs, they get one milligram of the drug, and these guys get two milligrams of the drugs. So I randomly assign my rats to three different groups. Notice that this group right here is my control group. It's my control group here. Why? Because they're taking the placebo. That's that's the placebo there where they're not they're not taking the drug. 
So then they're going to run the race, and then I'm going to compare my results. I'm going to compare my results. So there's three steps when you do an experiment. Randomly assign. You have to use some kind of control group, which in this case is the zero, the OMG, the zero milligrams. And then the final step is to compare your results. So you're gonna you're gonna do the experiment at that point, you're gonna compare results. So hopefully this gives you a better insight of what statisticians kind of do. They can do observational studies, they can ask surveys, or they can do an experiment. And I'll see you guys in the next lesson when we talk about a little bit more of what statistics is all about.